<laughs> what is that little thing down there? Can I play with it? <sighs> this is so creepy and demeaning on so many levels. La planète sauvage! Okay. Fight! Fight to death! Fight! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, today's movie from 1973, Le Planet Sauvage, also known as Fantastic Planet, is a uh, French and Czechoslovakian animation from the uh, early 70s there. So let's see, Czech Republic is... Uh, well, France is... Uh, and it was released in the United States on planet Earth. The story concerns a bunch of mysterious, gigantic blue aliens known as drugs? What were they called? I'm just gonna go with drugs. And uh, the humans on this planet are much smaller and they're kind of enslaved by these aliens and they're known as ohms. Now of course this movie was originally done in French but one of the American voice actors actually includes Barry Bostwick if that name sounds familiar he plays Brad in Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's definitely got a very unique uh, and striking visual to it and the animation itself kinda lies somewhere between the endless wonder and enchantment and imagination of a movie like Yellow Submarine which just has all these crazy characters going on in it and stuff and then it's got this very kind of like human hand-drawn cut-out DIY style of like Terry Gilliam's Monty Python's Flying Circus animation maybe there's some depth to the animation but it's kind of also got this maybe unintentionally unfinished looking feel to it. I mean, there's not really much to the backgrounds at all and, you know, but maybe that just contributes to the feeling of this kind of like lonely spaciousness. But that said, the character designs are very cool. I think especially like a lot of the uh, creatures that we only briefly see once, especially like the enemies, those are really interesting looking and very unique and uh, yeah, those are entertaining to look at. They're real little fucking bastards. They're all maniacally laughing and trying to kill one another and kill the humans. And You want to find them cute, but they're such little bastards. It's very highly regarded. Uh, as a matter of fact, it keeps popping up both visually and in audio samples on my favorite hip-hop album of all time. There I said it. Quasimodo's The Unseen. Uh, so, it's heavily sampled on probably my favorite song on this album, Come On Feet. And also, as you'll see here on the back cover, these characters here with the face masks on. Uh, these look like actual stills probably from the movie. Speaking about music, the soundtrack to this movie is quite bitchin'. It's uh, probably the best part of the movie, honestly. It's what I kind of take away from it the most. This soundtrack itself, it's very of its time, as is the animation and many other aspects of the movie. It's got this kind of, like, still lingering, like, Sid Barrett influence of, like, that kind of, like, you know, Zippo lighter on the guitar making, like, weird sounds and stuff, but it's also still kind of like pre-Dark Side of the Moon sounding era Pink Floyd back when they were still kind of like a cult band and were in fact probably very, very popular in France because they did some soundtracks for French movies at the time. And then there's also moments that sound like it could come from something almost like this, this band, Ohm, you know, maybe something like this psychedelic, it's somewhere in between like psychedelic and like Funky. You know, in particular, I absolutely love this scene somewhat early on in the movie where we see four of these aliens kind of like meditating and having these visions and like even with a very limited, very limited animation style at this time, it's still like pretty, I don't know, pretty trippy and uh, I don't know, that was a cool moment. This movie's a weird one. It's, uh, it's pretty disturbing, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of... it's kind of, like, depressing from beginning to end. It's a very cold, just otherworldly movie. 
a lot of yeah, just upsetting imagery and stuff throughout. Like a lot of like you keep they keep like pitting these like inferior animal like creatures to like fight to the death with one another. There was even one scene where it's like these little things that just have giant mouths and teeth and they're just fighting each other and then it's like, alright, well, one of them and one human just died, so I guess that's the end of that. <laughs> Immediately kill the other one. Okay. And the sort of not-so-subtle allegory to this movie is that it's just about human enslavement, so that's also very kind of heavy subject matter and also adds on to the whole disturbing factor. Uh, it's said that it's kind of also about uh, I guess Nazi occupied Czech Republic at the same time too, but unfortunately the message continues to live on and still be relevant though. I don't know that there is much of a message or a point I guess beyond showing that it's horrible and that people need to be free. People got to be free! Yes, but subtle it is not. I mean they have freaking collars around their neck, man! And I had a few more problems still with this movie, like I don't think we needed that first person narration that just kind of pops in and out at random times. And I feel like with a movie like this, you know, you want to kind of leave it to be mysterious and for the audience to kind of put together their own uh, conclusions about what's going on and, you know, leave little subtle messages and stuff that you can see with repeated viewings and whatnot. And believe me, I know I'm not one who should be talking about technical aspects because I still haven't figured out lighting or sound or anything or I'm just too lazy, but... I don't know, the sound is very kind of like flat and uh, I wish it was a lot more sprawling. It's definitely a spotty movie, it just feels like it could have went with uh, another draft or two both in the writing and in like the animation could have used more work and whatnot and it's definitely far from perfect and I was a bit underwhelmed with it but it's definitely an interesting historical curiosity and it's, you know, must have been great at the time, mind-blowing, I'm sure. Probably shouldn't show it to your kids. I mean, again, there's like a moment where they destroy an enemy and it's just kind of like lying lifeless with its eyes wide open upside down and they're like, yay! And then they just take a giant steak and just stab it in the forehead and then blood just spurts out of its head and they start collecting it in a, in a bowl and then start drinking the blood of their enemy. A little dark for kids, I don't know. Maybe show it to them when they're like fucking 11 or something, I don't know. So yeah, I guess I could kind of recommend this one. Maybe more as just a historical artifact. And also it just kind of ends abruptly.